this morning. You are my vision. Here we go.
sometimes in the busyness of our lives, we can just have checklists of how we think our day should go and even bring that into mindset into when we come into the house of God and just be waiting for the next part. But sometimes the Lord just wants us to slow down and say, his presence is the main event. Wherever his presence is, so let's just slow down and breathe in the presence of the Lord. Oh, let us just slow down and breathe in the He wants to heal you, and He wants to touch you like never before. So let us just slow down and breathe in the I could just sit, I could just sit and wait for all your goodness, hope to feel your presence, and I could just stay, I could just stay right where I am and hope to feel you, hope to feel something again.
the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide ransom of my life oh he's my soul let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run the fountain I dream from oh he's my soul let the king the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails the anchor in the waves oh he's my soul let the king
boring politics about who's in control of the narrative. Have you heard that phrasing? It's like everybody's warring over who gets to tell the story their way. But I want to tell you this morning, there's a war over the narrative of your life, and God wants to win it. And we choose who wins. So God has a narrative for your life that has victory in it. And if your brain or the enemy has been offering you a narrative all week that doesn't have victory in it, that has despair, that has crash dreams, that has roadblocks, that has all that other stuff in it, I want to tell you this morning in worship, God is taking back your narrative. God is taking back your narrative. And all he needs to do that is simply your agreement. So I want to pray this morning. You know, we sang, Be Thou My Vision. I love that. That's an ancient hymn and has that line in there that says, Heart of my own heart, whatever befalls. And you have the choice to focus on all the whirly, swirly chaos or focus on what's at the heart of your heart, which is Jesus Christ who's already won it all. If you're a Christian, that's who you are, period, period. We all have to lean into that in different times and spaces and ways. But if he's the heart of your own heart, he's going to water you from the inside right now. So this morning, I wonder if we could just join. I'm in this with you. I want to offer back my narrative to God. How about you? Because my mind has tried to fill in some gaps where I didn't understand what was going on. And this morning, in the presence of God, I can hear him saying, you're not going to figure that out. I'm in control of the narrative. And the narrative hasn't changed from the first time I promised you my goodness. So I believe you're in that. I can feel the energy in this room that we are saying, yes, Lord. So would you just make this an altar in this moment? God, we just want to give you back the narrative of our life. Father, we acknowledge that things have contended for it. But we declare in simple childlike trust, you're the Lord of the narrative. We give you the right to spin events and circumstances because your spin is actually back to the right way. Father, we declare that every scheme of the enemy to discourage us, to make us feel like we have failed, or even worse, that you have failed, we declare that that narrative is broken. And we win the war for the narrative of our life this morning. We declare it's as you say it is. It's as your word says it is. And I just want to reach out right now to people. There's some people in this room that have particular hurts. Like, I know we all need to give our narrative back to God. But some of you in this room have actually had some real onslaughts that are not just your average disappointment. And so right now, Holy Spirit, I thank you. If that's you, just in your heart, receive. There's an unction. There's a balm of Gilead. There's an unction from the Holy One that defies explaining. Some of you in this room are Christians. You've walked with the Lord a long time. You know a lot of things. And if you were talking to somebody else in your situation, you could explain truth. But that's not what you need right now. You just need the anointing of comfort that defies understanding. So just open your heart and receive that. It's in this room. It's in this body of believers. Because we all know what it's like to be at that place that you can't explain it. But we serve a God who doesn't need to explain it to comfort his children. Things will change. There is understanding. There is a brighter day. The future's paved with better days. But for right now, just receive his presence. So Lord, we all receive your presence. And we declare the curse of disappointment is broken. The curse of broken dreams is broken. And we clear the atmosphere, we shift the atmosphere with our worship, with our praise. And most of all, with our complete openness to whatever you want to do, Spirit of God. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for every person who's walked in these doors. There's no vain action in the kingdom. If you're here, God has something for you. And we receive that on behalf of each other. In Jesus' mighty name, why don't you do some act of kindness to someone around you before you sit down? I don't want to prescribe a hug or a high five because that's kind of cheesy, but high five them if you want. Show some kindness. Show you're glad they're here. And uh, I believe Matthew... Dwayne Summers is going to come. I know all the things. 
Good morning. Who's happy to be here? I am. Man, I can feel the presence up here. It's strong. Man, worship was incredible. If it was just me back there, um, I was really feeling it. Um, real quick, just quickly, if there are any kids, uh, the kids are already back. They're having a, a party this morning, an arts day um, in the kitchen. Um, actually, it was a lot of fun. I was setting up for it. Um, it, looks, it looks like a lot of fun. So if there's any kids, uh, feel free to make your way that way. Um, and then also, just a reminder, uh, for any new guests, if, if you're new, uh, if the first time with us, we'd like to shake your hand, meet you briefly um, after service. Will that be in there? Probably won't be in there. Let's maybe move it into this way. Okay. So we have a gift for you, and we'll give it to you over here. If you're, if you're new this morning, we'd love to shake your hand. It'll be quick, um, just to say hello. So um, there's something coming up. It's really exciting to me, and I think a few of you on November 19th. Does anybody know what that is? The Thanksgiving dinner and awards banquet at the Abbey. This isn't your typical turkey day meal at a church. We don't just come in and eat turkey. We do a lot more than that. We've been doing this for ever since I was a kid, and it's something I've always looked forward to, and it's evolved, and some really cool things have emerged. Um, and I think it holds par with, like, the Emmys. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, so come November 19th. Um, there's going to be sign-ups for food next week. Um, but uh, it, expect great things. Uh, there's going to be some fun, creative, and silly awards. Um, there's going to be some cool music. There's going to be entertainment. And then also a couple things that are new this year. We're going to have a very cool photo booth set up out front, I believe, and the way we're going to do it is some of you are going to be asked to bring your food early, right? And so in the past, we haven't really had anything for those people to do for that hour when you bring your food early, right? You just kind of wonder. So um, come this year, bring your food early, and then we're going to have a, photo, a really nice photo set up this way um, so you can take pictures with your family. Use a couple uh, Thanksgiving photos with your family. Um, it's going to be really nice. So that's, that's a really nice thing to do before we uh, jump into the festivities in the evening. And then also there's going to be a centerpiece creativity contest. This isn't your typical. So, so, so we're going to have a contest on the, on the table centerpieces. We don't just want flowers, okay? We want creativity, fun stuff. Um, Joel did, I think Joel won last year, didn't he? So he had a really cool um, axe design that it was, it was spectacular. Um, so um, we'll have judges. There's going to be awards for that. Uh, more details on that will come. Um, so that's going to be great. And then obviously there's going to be a ton of food. Um, and that's November 19th. Um, check your app or the bulletin, however you get your news for the Abbey. Um, and then one thing that's on my heart uh, real quick, um, we've been celebrating jobs and careers at the Abbey. God is definitely moving in that area here. Uh, we've, had, we've heard some really cool testimonies uh, from Christopher Rasmussen and some other ones that, that have been motivating to me and just inspirational. Um, and we have another one. Um, our own Jessie Spradlin on the worship team has a really cool story. I asked her if she, if she didn't mind sharing just a couple minutes uh, with you of what happened, and, uh, and then we'll hear from Sam. Hello. So um, Matt asked me this morning to tell you about uh, how I got my job, but the first step in doing that was moving to Texas without a job. So you guys are already here, so check that off your list. Um, but so Pauline and I moved here just completely by faith, and we're like, we're going to get jobs. God's calling us here. And it was a month of, like, s complete 100% self-doubt of, like, what am I doing with my life? Why don't I have a job? Going to interviews, not getting the jobs I wanted to get or I thought I would get. And, you know, even things that I really thought were going to work out didn't work out. And I'm like, what the heck, God? Like, you told me to go here. And um, so it really is a long story, and I will make it shorter. Um, but um, I guess I'm saying that to say is, like, I was kind of at a point of, like, disappointment of, like, but no other job, honestly, was something that, like, my heartbeat was or that, like, really grabbed me. It was just kind of something I could do. Um, but God had something in mind that was literally, like, tailor-made for me. So I'm a, 
going to bed around midnight, which is actually early for me. And I'm like, oh, let's just look at LinkedIn one more time. So I looked at LinkedIn and I saw this um, uh, application or this job for a place at Sound Productions. And I was like, there's a piano on their logo. I have to work here. So I look and it's like a music shop. It's like a, it's just an awesome like music place. They sell like boards. I think they actually fixed the Abbey's keyboard at one point. Um, they started their business by doing backline for Elvis Presley, so they're pretty legit. So I filled out the application and like finished it at like 2 a.m. That was on a Friday. And then Monday I was like, I'm going to go to this place and I'm going to Rory Gilmore these people. I'm going to sit there until they give me that job. And so in Gilmore Girl fashion, I took uh, and advice from Pauline. If she's here listening, she'll say it was her idea. Um, I got like a thing of coffee at Starbucks, you know, those carriers. And I brought coffee and I literally showed up right when they opened and I walked through the door and I was like, hi, can I speak to your hiring manager? And everyone just looked so flustered. And they were like, uh, 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 and everybody like thought for a second, like, who is our hiring manager? And so then finally I met with a lady and um, I said, hi, I uh, just applied for your position for an office assistant at, you know, here. And uh, I just came here to tell you that there's literally no one else that will be better for this job than me. And there is no one that will be more passionate about this job. There is no one that will be more dedicated to this job. You do not, I want you to know me before you look at any of these other resumes. This is my job. And so she just kind of looks at me and she's like, you brought coffee? That's so nice. And uh, now that I've gotten to know her, she super loves coffee. So maybe that's why this happened. So like I go over there and like funny enough, one of my songwriter friends knows somebody who works there. So he called him and just let him know, hey, she's coming by. Like, And he was like, hey, we'll just tell Jessie to say hi to me if she comes here. So she's like, I mean, I guess since you're here, you can like come in my office and we can, I can tell you about the position, I guess. And I'm like, okay. So we go back there and we talk about the position and she tells me everything. And I'm just like, yes, 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 I'm perfect for it. Yes, okay. So then um, she was like, <laughs> then she was like, well, that's really, I mean, I guess we'll, we'll take this into consideration when we make our decision. And then she's like, do you have any more questions? And I, and I was like, yeah, is Rick here? That's the guy who I like knew through a friend. And she's like, uh, yeah, I do know Rick. I'm like, not really, but I know him through a friend. And she calls. She's like, he doesn't usually answer his phone. Oh, hi, Rick. Okay. She And then she hangs up, and she's like, I guess she was expecting you. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so then Rick comes in, and we meet, and we're like, oh, I'm a songwriter. You're a songwriter. Cool. Fist bump. And then she's like, hey, while you were talking to Rick, I, like, chatted my boss, who is, by the way, the president of the company. She left that detail out, and um, she's like, he wants to meet with you. So I walk in his office, and he literally just goes, you had me at coffee. And I'm just like, I knew if I brought coffee, you couldn't say no to me. So then he, like, hits me with all these questions, and, like, Holy Ghost is like, bam, 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 bam. And so I just, like, hit every question out of the park, and he's just like, can you go wait in this other room for a second? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, sure. So I go wait in this other room, and they have, like, Four other people interview me, like, on the spot. And I'm just sitting there, like, I'm, like, I'm getting this job. Like, this is happening. And um, so, anyways, then uh, other people interview me. He comes back into, into the room with, like, the hiring manager who's now my boss. And um, she was, like, he looked at me, and he's, like, I have never in the history of this entire company ever done this but we would like to offer you the job today. <laughs> That's God. That's crazy, right? And I said, well, I would like to accept the job today. So <laughs> literally, like, I walked out. They forgot to talk to me about my salary, forgot to tell me about my hours. For, I'm like, can, I, can, can we, like, and then they're like, oh, my gosh, we totally forgot. So we had to, like, reel it back in and talk about it. But um, I, they were like, when can you start? And I was like, this afternoon. And they were like, how about tomorrow? And I was like, okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, I started working there and I have my 60 day review coming up um, on Monday actually. So I just feel like ever since then, it's like God is just like 
I don't know. It's like I never could have imagined him doing that. Literally, I walked out of the door, and I got to my car, and I was like, I cannot believe that just worked. <laughs> <laughs> and I, like, called everyone that had been praying, and I'm like, I got, I, got, I got the job. They're like, right now? I'm like, yeah, right. Like, I start tomorrow, like, right now. So, anyway, I know it was a long story, but anyway. So, God has a tailor-made job for you. If you don't get something that you want, just seriously know God has a door for you. And it really is, it's only because he has something better. I know people say that all the time, but living proof, he really does. Isn't that the favor of God right there? Yeah. That was awesome. Thanks for doing that. Um, Sam's going to come share our offering. I thought that was an awesome story. That's the, not only the boldness of God, the Holy Spirit, the favor, it hits it all up. And she got her dream job, so that's awesome. Yeah. Here's Sam Brownback <laughs> in the beard. Yeah. <laughs> so I get to come after that. Um, <laughs> I heard that story, I remember it probably a couple weeks ago whenever she got the job and was like, coffee, why didn't I think of that? I need to get coffee and, and go to the job. What about food? Do they like food? Can I, can I go get food for people? Um, so for those of you that don't know, I'm also interviewing and stuff too. Um, so I wanted to kind of share uh, where I'm at, kind of what God's been doing through me in that process. And hopefully for those that are hoping for a job can, um, or for promotion can relate to it as well. Um, about a month ago, there's this, this company called Artistry Labs and based out of Dallas and they're a marketing firm that specializes in church churches. So they're, they're real passionate about branding and churches and stuff. So it's, it's ultimately what I feel I've, I'm called to do and it's a dream job and everything. And I'm super excited about it. So, and I've been applying to them for about a year. Um, and then a month and a half ago, I got called in for my first interview. So I was super excited it's like, yes, this is it. If, if they can just interview me and stuff, it's, it's going to be good. So I drive to Dallas and waiting in the car. I get there like 20 minutes early because if you're on time, you're late. <laughs> yeah. So get there 20 minutes early. And I'm just sitting in the car like, you know, you have enough time to think. And that's, that can be sometimes dangerous. So I'm just sitting in the car and I'm like, man, I am super nervous. And it might have been the amount of caffeine I had before. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> So I was sitting there like, why am I, it was so much so that I was like, why am I so nervous? Like, this isn't actually even like me. And so I start speaking in tongues. I was like, this is, this is not me. It's, it's got to be, I've got to calm my nerves somehow. And I, as I do that, I hear God say, you're looking to this job as a provider. And it, oh, man. it hit me like a ton of bricks. And it just, I realized that that job wasn't it's it's a dream job it's great it's what i feel like i'm supposed to do but it's not it's not the provider it provides yes and it's it's great but god is my provider even if i get that job whether i get it or not god is my provider and so so it totally shifted um how i approached the interview i was i was nervous but it was like in still peace at the same time like it the feelings didn't change but i wasn't overwhelmed so i went in and approached the interview of like hey yeah this is what i can do this is how i want to help and joe really helped me prepare for the interview and i think it, it went really well so well i had a second interview and then with the vp and the vp said well we want to get you in with the third interview so at this point, I'm still waiting and stuff, and I'm having to, it's a daily reminder of, like, God is my provider. This job isn't going to provide me. It may provide money and stuff, and, but God ultimately is going to provide that. Um, so whenever I got asked to do offering, I was like, let's, let's, someone needs to hear that too. So I kind of dug in of, like, where I knew God, Jehovah Jireh, um, was the provider. So I kind of dug in and started to read of Abraham. It was pre whenever he was told by God to sacrifice his son, he, I'm sure he was nervous and didn't want to as well. Um, so he goes up to the mountain, <laughs> goes up to the mountain, and, um, and I, from what I read, he's about to kill him, the son, and then a sacrifice, a lamb in the thicket appears, and God says, no, stop. You've done what I've, you, I can sh know you can follow my directions, now kill this sacrifice instead. So ultimately, Abraham called God Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides, because he provided even a sacrifice. 
So, like, then that's an offering, ultimately. The sacrifice of the day was an offering. So God can even provide an offering today. So I just wanted to encourage you on that and stuff. And so let's, if you can go ahead and put your offering, the slides up, guys, that'd be great. And I just want to pray over you before we give. God, we just thank you for, um, <clears throat> for what you're doing. And we thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. We thank you for jobs for promotions. We thank you that they are not our source, but you are, God. And we thank you that you're a good father and that you're providing us with creative ideas, witty inventions, and resources, kingdom resources that you would just flow down. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. There should be ways to give up on the screen. been a dream